Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is reverse coding which is an easy level problem. So this particular problem is not very difficult but I believe the test cases are wrong today because uh, this is the accepted solution that you see not uh, I have written here. This solution is getting accepted but I believe that this is wrong. I will tell you a couple of reasons why this is wrong. And uh, before that, let me just first explain you the question. So the question says that we have been given an integer n and we have to find the sum of all the integers from 1 to n, right? So basically this has a simple mathematical formula and for any value n, we just have to find out the value of n into n plus 1 by 2, right? Why do we need to use this formula? Because the value of n is up to 10 to the power 7. So we might not be able to loop through all the values. So that is why we are interested in using the formula n into n plus 1 by 2. For example, uh, in this case also, you can see that uh, the value of n is 6 and if you choose n is equal to 6, then n into n plus 1 is 7 into 6 divided by 2. So it is effectively 7 into 3 that is equal to 21, right. So we have to return the answer module 10 to the power 9 plus 7. Now this is the thing where this the sample test cases go wrong here. So you will see what I am doing here is I am calculating n into n plus 1 and then taking its mod and then dividing the answer by 2 and then taking its mod. So this is absolutely wrong way of doing modular arithmetic and somehow this solution is getting accepted and the correct one is getting rejected. I will tell you why I believe uh, like uh, my solution is correct. So uh, if I just show you. So we will we'll discuss this test case later but let me just show you an example. So what happens is let us say we have a value 4. Let us say we have a value 4 and then we have a value 3 and we want to multiply them and we want to find the whole modulus 7, right. So let us first find out what is the correct answer of this particular value. So 4 into 3 is 12 and 12 by 2 is 6. So we have to find this value mod 7. So basically we have to find 6 mod 7 and that is equal to 6 itself, right. This is the correct answer. If you go by the approach that I have submitted just now which is getting accepted. So you will see that it is going to be 4 into 3 modulus 7. So let me show you again. So I, what I am doing is I am multiplying the two numbers and then taking its mod right. So I am doing 12 mod 7. So this is essentially going to be 5 right. So this part is 5. Now what I am doing is I am dividing it by the remainder and then taking mod again. So if I have 5, I divide 5 by 2 and then take its mod by 7. So this value is essentially going to be 2 mod 7 and eventually 2. So this is the wrong answer. So you see that this approach is absolutely wrong and uh, if I just quickly submit this solution, you will see that it gets accepted. So you see that it gets accepted. Now moreover, there is one more thing I wanted to show you. So this is the test case where my original code was failing which I feel is correct. So the value is 63032 uh, and this is my output and this is the their output, right. So this particular output is getting produced when I used the correct method, right, this one. But I believe the correct answer is still this. Why is this so? So let us take this particular value 63032 and uh, make a brute force solution. So here I did it. So this is just a simple code where I am initializing my answer with 0. I am running a simple for loop from 1 to less than n plus 1. So basically all the values from 1 to n, right. So I am uh, updating my answer as answer plus i and taking mod value. So this mod is also defined here, then it's for 9 plus 7, right. And I am just at the end printing the answer. So this is the value that I want to know for, but let me just uh, change this to a smaller value so that you know. So for uh, like 10, it results 55, which is the correct answer for 6, let's say it should be 21, right. So this is a simple brute force solution which is working. Now. You will see when I enter this particular value 63032, this is the answer that is getting produced and this is a brute force solution, right? This cannot be wrong. So this is the value that is being produced 986548021. So this is the exact value which my out code was giving and this is the wrong value that their code is giving, right? So you see this is why I feel that this uh, input is wrong and this should be absolutely changed. Now uh, what is the correct approach then? This is wrong. So uh, for multiplying, if uh, we have two integers in modular arithmetic, if we have two integers a into b and we have to take its mod, right. So we can do it directly like a mod, 
this particular value into p modulo mod value and then take whole mod right this is a valid approach and this works but if i am doing a by b and then taking mod right i cannot this is not equals to i cannot do it like a mod like this and b mod like this and then divide and then take whole mod this is wrong right this is what i was doing in the previous approach instead what i should do is whenever i have a remainder i need and i need to take mod i need to find a value called modulo modulo multiplicative inverse multiplicative inverse right so uh, there is a uh, like actual mathematical derivation of this particular thing but uh, in certain problems like uh, whenever you find need to find modular arithmetic you just need to know one property and you'll be able to solve the questions so if this mod value is a prime number for example 10 raised to the 9 plus 7 is a prime number right so whenever this is a prime number you can calculate the modulo multiplicative inverse of the remainder so what is the inverse let's say i need to subtract two numbers right so let's say i want to find the value of 5 minus 3 right so what i can do is i can instead write it as 5 plus minus 3 right so what happened here this minus 3 is an inverse of 3 right so by this i just try to change the form of the statement into something which i am already familiar with i know how to do addition right i don't know how to do subtraction so what i do is i write 3 as minus 3 which is the inverse of 3 right so if i just add the inverse of 3 to 5 the result will be the same similarly goes for division as well so for example if i want to find the value of 7 by 8 i don't know how to find the value of 7 by 8 so i write 7 i write multiply by 1 by 8 so 1 by 8 is actually the inverse of 8 in multiplication right so this is why i can write it in multiplication form so you see the thing is the same i wanted to find 7 divided by 8 i write, i can also write it as 7 into 1 by 8 the thing is the same it's just that i'm using some operators for which i already know what is the answer right similarly we use modular multiplicative inverse so for example if i want to find a by b mod value let's say p is the modular multiplicative inverse of b so i can write the whole answer as a into p mod this particular value and now i know how to like uh, simplify this i can write a modulo mod into p modulo mod and whole mod right now the question is how do i find uh, this particular modular multiplicative inverse i talked about prime numbers right so you can find it with the help of a formula in case of prime numbers and that formula is you have to calculate power of the value of b for which we want to find the modular multiplicative inverse mod minus 2 and then you can again take mod right so basically you will have to find b raised to the power mod minus 2 right at each at each step you are allowed to take the modulo so basically b into b into b into b mod minus 2 times and then you have to take this values modulo this will be the modulo multiplicative inverse and then you can multiply this value with the numerator so let us see the same thing with this example so we wanted to find 4 into 3 divided by 2 modulo 7 so we need to find the modulo multiplicative inverse of 2 so it is going to be 2 raised to the power 5 why because the value of mod is 7 so 7 minus 2 is 5 so we need to find 2 raised to the power 5 so 2 raised to the power 5 is 32 right so we need to find the answer of 4 into 3 into 32 mod 7 we can individually take mod so this is 12 into 4 right mod 7 this is 5 right so so i can write it as 12 as 12 mod 7 into 4 mod 7 and whole mod 7 so this is 5 5 into 4 is 20 20 mod 7 so this value is going to be 6 right so this is exactly what we found here right so i have shown an example where modular multiplicative inverse works and obviously the formula that i told you denominator raised to the power mod minus 2 is only going to work when the mod value is a prime number right so this is just a formula that you need to know so that's it now let me just also show you the code which i feel is correct and is giving wrong answer so this is the code what i have done is i have uh, initialized my mod with 10 is 9 plus 7 
and I'm calculating the value of n into n plus 1 modulo. Now, instead of dividing by 2, I'm multiplying it with a certain value and this is the modulo multiplicative inverse of 2 with respect to 10 to the power 9 plus 7, right? So, why only this value? This is the value actually equals to 2 raised to the power 10 to the power 9 plus 5, right? So, you will get this value. You can also calculate it using binary exponentiation. But since uh, they only wanted it to be an O of 1 solution, that is why I just directly put the hard coded value. And uh, if you are wondering how I calculated it, so if I can just show you here. So, I have my exponentiation function, binary exponentiation function. I do this thing and I can just see out the value of answer. So, let me just also store it, it in an answer variable. Right, so if I run this, if I run this now, you will get this value, right. So I calculated it using 2 raised to the power mod minus 2. You can also calculate it in the program. It's just a simple operation. And if I show you my exponentiation function, it's a simple binary exponentiation function, right. Now, this was all about today's solution. And I still believe that this uh, their solution is wrong. However, I'm going to upload the code in the GitHub for the accepted solution for now and later when if the test cases get changed you can write it down in the comment that they have been updated and i'll update the code as well right so this was all about today's problem of the day i hope that you guys were able to understand the correct solution and if you guys did then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really helps the youtube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and will be able to reach more number of people like you who want to keep solving new problems so I see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet. In case you are one of them, then definitely consider subscribing. And till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye-bye.